All right, here we go, guys. This video is at the request of Chris Renfro from Asheville Billiards. Um, I use his uh, Techno Duds, and every time I do a tip install, he asks me for a video because I do them by hand. So he wants a video of me doing one by hand. So I'm gonna take my six-year-old daughter's Viper Q that I think this is like a 24 inch shaft, but I'm gonna go ahead and replace the tip on this so you can guys, you guys can see how you do it by hand. So. Bear with me, I apologize for the camera angle. I can't find my tripod. I just threw this up on a table. So bear with me and I'll walk you through this process real quick. First thing you gotta do, cut off the old tip. This one actually came off pretty clean, so we're pretty lucky there. Next thing you wanna do is get you some Pretty serious sandpaper, I think this is 60 grit. And you're gonna take on your leg and hold, hold it with what, this hand. You're gonna use the butt end or the joint end of the shaft on your thigh and you're gonna roll it on your finger. Just face off that shaft. You, you wanna have it flush against your finger like this. And all you're trying to do is scuff up the edge and take off whatever little bit remaining of that previous tip that was on there. Now you want to try to get this as flat as you can so you want to make sure there's not too much pressure in the middle because you'll dish out the the center of the ferrule. So you just try to keep it flat. Get it in there real good. I didn't get a razor blade. Stick with me just one second. Let me grab a razor blade. Just your ordinary utility blade. We're gonna use this as a machine straight edge so you can verify that your ferrule's flat. This one's actually pretty flat already. Okay, that's good to go. Set that over there. Take your Techno Dead. Open it up. Now Chris might get mad at me about this one because I don't use the glue that he recommends. I normally do, but I'm out, so I'm just using Loctite, the liquidy stuff, not the gel. I usually use the ultra control gel. Same 60 grit paper, rough up the, the back of it. Turn it a few times to make sure you're getting it flat. I do this on, on my desk because this is metal, so I know that it's flat. If you do it on a, like a wood countertop, sometimes it's kind of wavy or whatever. Glass works, but machine metal is your best bet. Um, if you've got a granite countertop, those are machine too, so that works really well. Okay, I want you, the, the back is all matte. It's not shiny anymore. <sighs> Try not to touch it because you'll get finger oils and stuff on it. Get your shaft ready. You don't need a whole lot of glue for this because whatever glue squeezes out, you got to wipe off. So I try to use just a, I don't know, about a dot the size of a pencil eraser. About like that. You take it, move it around for a sec. Try to get it leveled up. And you hold it on there. I usually try to do at least 30 seconds, sometimes a minute. Doesn't really matter. I'm also gonna do a video after this one 
Um, I'm gonna try to do this one entirely by hand with no power tools at all. And then I'm gonna make another video after this one that shows you the way I usually do it. Um, this one's a little bit safer. You're less likely to screw up your stuff. But um, in the next video, you'll see the way that I normally do it. It's a little more risky. I've torn up a couple ferrules learn, learning how to do it, but I've probably done, I don't know, 150 or 200 tips this way. So uh, I, I, I think it's a good method if you don't have access to a Q repair guy or you don't want to spend $1,000 on a lathe. Um, it's a good way to get you going. So you take this, wipe off your excess glue. Razor blade, you want to push this down pretty hard and you're just going to trim anything that's hanging off. Of course I have a dull blade on this one. I'll tell you what, because this one's kind of fat, I'm not even going to use a razor blade. I'm just going to show you how to do it with sandpaper. So, where is... Little squares all you need. This is 320. Now you're just holding the tip. You're not touching the ferrule at all. It is a little bit laborious, but this will get you there. You don't need a whole lot of pressure in the middle of the queue. The main thing, what you're seeing is just the dust falling on the ferrule. You're not actually tearing the ferrule up. Um, but you don't need a whole lot of pressure in the middle. Get you a new spot on the paper every, every once in a while. If anyone's curious, Snarky Puppies, the music that's playing in the background, phenomenal band. Time for a new piece. It also helps if you have a uh, like a wet rag because when you get the dust from the tip on your fingers you're you you can not grip the paper as well and I don't have that so if you see me licking my fingers that's what I'm doing You can feel in the paper, if it's starting to get warm, you want to stop. Um, heat is not good for any of the Oxfield tips. Um, I've done this with Kytex also, and they don't like heat. So just let it cool off. Try not to bang it into stuff. Luckily, this is a uh, $40 Viper cube, so not a big deal. Check your progress every once in a while. See how you're doing. I think I am gonna trim this one side just a little bit. You wanna be real careful as you slide down to the ferrule till you get in the tip and then you can be a little bit more aggressive.
The main reason I didn't want to use the utility knife right off the bat is because the glue hadn't set all the way and I was worried about tearing up that glue joint. But now that it's been a little bit, you can get on it a little more and not worry about it quite as much. Okay, now we'll go back to the sandpaper. Like I said, this does take a while, but the results end up good if you know what you're doing. Take your time, don't rush. Just trying to get a nice even, you want it flat down the side of the ferrule. Okay, we're getting there. We're not quite ready to switch yet. Use my coffee. <laughs> it's a whole lot easier to grip the paper when your fingers are a little damp. Your hand might cramp a little bit, it just means you gotta take a break. And you can actually feel it through the paper where there are high spots. We're getting close, getting close.
All right, now we're gonna switch to 600. Nope, can't even do it left-handed. Fingers are cramping a little bit. It's looking pretty good. Now, get you about two inches of masking tape. I usually use frog tape. Now you don't have to do this part. I just like, I like the shoulders on my tips to be black. Um, I usually use frog tape because it cuts a little better when you pull it off, but I'm out. So this is just regular masking tape. Once you get your ferro taped off, marks a lot. I don't know if you guys can see that. Now while that soaks in and dries a little, I like to get my shaper. These things are awesome by the way, they're like eight bucks. Normally I put the shaft on the ground, but this one's short, so I'm gonna do it up here. You will make a mess doing this, by the way. Okay. You just wipe off. Looks good. Make another pass with the marker.
looking pretty good. Okay. This is 1200. Um, not quite ready for that yet. Peel your tape. Should make a nice clean line. Oh, not so much. That's why I like frog tape, it cuts better. You can see there's a, just a little bit of bleed over, but we're gonna take care of that, it's no big deal. Um, because there's bleed over, I'm gonna go back to the 600. But uh, because you made two passes, that marker's gonna permeate down into the tip a little bit. So you don't have to worry about it quite as much. Got some coffee on my ferrule. That's lovely. It usually doesn't take this long, but uh, because I'm doing this on video, I'm kind of nervous, feeling a little stupid, so bear with me. Well, it looks like there's just going to be a little bit of bleed over on the ferrule because I didn't tape it very well. But uh, you'll at least be able to see what the tip turned out like. Because this is for my six-year-old, I don't, I don't really care that there's a little black on, on the ferrule. So, get you some paper towel. Um, beeswax is what I prefer for this. But if you've ever bought beeswax, they want to charge you like eight bucks for a little chunk of it. Go to the hardware store and get you a toilet seal. It's the exact same stuff, still beeswax. Just kind of load up the paper towel with it. You're gonna want to do this a couple times. Applying quite a bit more pressure this time to burnish up the sides. Get you some twelve hundred. Smooth it out. Should feel a lot smoother now. Some more marker, so let's retake this.
That's how you should have taped it the first time, dummy. But let me learn. Getting a real nice finish. It's looking good. Leave it around and let it dry off a little bit. Peel that tape off. I'm going to go back to our wax. I'm going to add some more. And that first tape job really dicked up that ferrule. But if you want to take the time to sand it out, it will sand out. Just use 600 or higher and take your time. Um, if you use anything more aggressive than that, you're going to put grooves in your ferrule and you don't want that. And if you're using 600 by hand, it's going to take you forever to make that ferrule any smaller. All you're trying to do is get the marker off. If you get wax on your tip, just wipe it off. We're going to hit it again with the shaper. Real gentle this time, all you're trying to do is get that wax off, get an even scuff going. And then you take a part of the paper towel that doesn't have wax on it, and you're just going to burnish it up. Let me come over here and try to get this on the camera where you can see it. Come on, focus. There you go. I mean, you can see the marker on the ferrule a little bit there, but that's a uh, by hand Techno Dud with Sharpie on it. Um, stand by for the next video. I'll show you the way I normally do it. It's quite a bit quicker, and I think I get repeatable results a little bit better. But uh, thanks, Chris. Love your tips. Stand by for the next one.